I began um, by narrating a story, a uh, story of uh, a novel written by Rai Bradbury, uh, which is titled Fahrenheit 451, where a dictator orders the fire force to destroy all kinds of books in the libraries or collected at home. But one of the members of the fire force, Guy Montag, protects some of these books. He runs away to the borders and he meets some people who have by hearted uh, some of the major classics uh, of the of Western literature and who are also known by the name of the particular classics that they have, uh, I mean, uh, they have by hearted. And when the dictator's time ends, they come back to uh, come back to the city, uh, the capital city, and they restart the library from the uh, from the memory of the novels or whatever other works they have by hearted. I said this only to say that uh, always dictators and fascists have been afraid of books because books carry thoughts and thoughts lead to ideas and ideas lead to change and change is the one thing that every dictator is always afraid of and 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 that's why all autocrats or all kinds of totalitarian regimes have tried to suppress books to censor books to even to burn books i also gave a short history of book burning in recent uh, uh, human human history and finally i said that there are certain factors that seem to discourage us from reading the first is speed which has been called the ecstasy of new technology by the thinker and the novelist milan kundera uh, because we believe so much in speed that we do not uh, believe in leisure we don't have any time left for reading we don't have any time left for meditating over our own lives and the lives of others meditating over the society and the kind of transformation that should bring about in the in the society so speed uh, happens to be a major enemy of uh, reading today because reading requires leisure, reading requires time, reading requires uh, uh, that you meditate on what you have read and absorb the ideas. All these take a lot of time. So we no more have the time to, uh, I mean, uh, to stretch ourselves on a, on a meadow and look at the windows opening in the sky and read a beautiful book of poetry or maybe a book of fiction or a book of ideas and to think about what we have read and secondly i said the second major enemy of reading uh, is uh, perhaps the careerism because uh, the, which is uh, essentially a product of a product of a the uh, profit seeking capitalism because capitalists always want us not to think about anything else but just to do our jobs or uh, get promoted or get even better jobs with better salaries and so our reading is often confined to those books which help us get a promotion or get another job which where uh, you have a uh, kind of better salary and so careerism happens to be the, the, the second major impediment to proper and uh, informative uh, informative reading and thirdly there is information culture we are we are easily satisfied by superficial information we go to the internet and you get whatever you want on the internet you go to wikipedia you go to various sources on the internet and we are happy with that but actually we need to process this information and uh, and transform it into knowledge and and transform this knowledge into wisdom which will ultimately help us live a meaningful and ethical life a life for other people but we are not given that kind of time we often end with uh, information we don't move on to knowledge and wisdom the other two uh, higher states of uh, of of learning and thirdly, I said uh, religious fundamentalism is a major enemy of reading because the fundamentalists believe that you need to have only a single book on your table, which is the book of your religion. And uh, any, reading any other book might force you to question at least some of the assumptions in the particular book, which is supposed to be your holy book. And, and so uh, those uh, proponents of the holy books often do not want you to read other books because they think all other books are unholy. And, and 
and they don't want you to really read and interrogate what you have read uh, in the in the what in whatever holy book you believe in or you are supposed to uh, supposed to follow and uh, then i said culture industry is another impediment to reading because capitalism believes in turning even culture into an industry let it be a book publication let it be art production so all kinds of art literature everything that we thought to have been parts of culture all these are turned turned into uh, capital for more profit making so you have popular television serials you have various kinds of popular films which is stereotype people and which do not really teach you anything anything in particular uh, but which only keep you in a state of suspense and uh, uh, and, and they leave you uh, with a with a very dark and sordid picture of the world where everybody is selfish everybody is jealous and there is a lot of uh, you know envy and murder and all, all sorts of evil so this kind of uh, uh, cult- culture being turned into an industry is another major uh, impediment to uh, impediment to reading uh, so dogmatism religious uh, i mean the kind of uh, um, um, religious fundamentalism culture industry information culture uh, ca- ca- careerism lack of leisure and uh, our blind faith in speed all these are some of the major factors that seem to discourage us uh, uh, from uh, reading so we need to uh, we need to retrieve our habit of reading we need to uh, to uh, retrieve our uh, you know the, the library culture which was the very seed of the great renaissance of which kerala is proud and kerala was actually born uh, in the in the in the present sense from that kind of renaissance and perhaps it is time we need a new kind of renaissance where we interrogate fascism we interrogate all kinds of enemies of democracy all ideas that stand against the uh, the idea of democracy of uh, from below uh, the idea of freedom the idea of equality uh, and the idea of justice uh, all, all of which are embodied in our uh, great constitution so you know to uh, win back our constitution win back our rights win back our lives win back our dreams we need to we need to read and to to, to uh, develop a reading culture develop our libraries and our libraries should become more than libraries more than uh, collections of dead books but centers of cultural activity as they used to be uh, earlier in in kerala you know uh, there were um, uh, reading clubs uh, there were plays being staged there there was there was poetry being read books being discussed perhaps uh, libraries have to uh, 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 come back to the map of kerala and the map of india uh, as major centers of culture learning interrogation and rebuilding the country